In a world where technology is increasingly powerful, how do we balance security and privacy? This question has become more pertinent as surveillance technologies evolve and become deeply intertwined with our daily lives. Today we embark on a journey to explore this evolution and its impact on privacy. The balance between security and privacy is a delicate one. On one hand, we have the need for security, preventing crime, ensuring national safety, and maintaining order. On the other hand, we have the right to privacy, a fundamental human right enshrined in many international laws and treaties. In the midst of this, surveillance technologies have transformed. They've become powerful tools, capable of collecting and analyzing massive amounts of data. But with this power comes the potential for misuse and the erosion of privacy rights. So, how do we navigate this complex landscape? Join us as we journey through the evolution of surveillance technologies and their impact on privacy. Surveillance as we know it today, began in the 20th century. This era saw the emergence of early surveillance technologies, notably wiretapping and closed-circuit television, or CCTV. These tools were novel, groundbreaking, and they gave birth to a new era of monitoring and control. Wiretapping, the act of secretly listening to telephone conversations, was a game-changer for law enforcement and intelligence agencies. It offered an unprecedented window into private communications, allowing authorities to gather information in real time. This was an era where a simple telephone could become an instrument of surveillance. Simultaneously, the advent of CCTV marked a major leap in visual surveillance. This technology transformed the way we monitor public spaces. Streets, banks, stores and even homes could now be watched, recorded and analyzed. It was a revolutionary shift indeed, but not without its implications. These early forms of surveillance were primarily used for security purposes. Wiretapping was instrumental in solving criminal cases and thwarting potential threats. CCTV, on the other hand, served as a deterrent to crime, providing a sense of safety in public spaces. These technologies played a pivotal role in maintaining law and order, and in many ways still do. However, as these technologies seeped into everyday life, they also began to impact privacy. The balance between security and privacy started to sway. Wiretapping, for instance, raised questions about the sanctity of personal communication. Could a private conversation remain private in the age of surveillance? Similarly, the widespread use of CCTV led to debates about the right to anonymity in public spaces. These technologies, while enhancing security, were also eroding the boundaries of personal privacy. As we moved further into the 20th century, these debates only intensified. The rise of digital communication and the internet brought new challenges and opportunities for surveillance. The landscape was changing rapidly, and with it our understanding of privacy and security. As technology advanced, so did the methods of surveillance. The digital age brought about a seismic shift in surveillance. Suddenly, the world was not only connected by wires and signals, but also by a vast invisible network of data. The advent of this new era didn't just change the way we communicate or do business, it revolutionized the landscape of surveillance. Let's take a step back and consider the concept of surveillance in its most traditional sense. It involved physical observation, perhaps a pair of binoculars, a stakeout, or a covert following. The scope was limited, the process time-consuming, and the results often uncertain. Enter the digital age. Surveillance was no longer constrained by physical boundaries, it was now possible to monitor an individual's activities from thousands of miles away, thanks to technologies like internet monitoring and GPS tracking. You could be sitting in your living room in New York, but a digital eye could be watching you from a server in Berlin or Beijing. Internet monitoring in particular became a potent tool. Every click, every search, every website visited became a data point, a piece of the puzzle that could be used to sketch out a person's profile, their habits, interests, even their thoughts to a certain extent. GPS tracking, on the other hand, took surveillance out of the cyber world and into the real one. It made it possible to track a person's movements in real time, providing a wealth of information about their routines, their favorite places, the people they meet, these digital surveillance technologies weren't just more efficient, they were also more intrusive. They eroded the line between public and private, blurring the boundaries of what was considered personal. Suddenly your thoughts, your movements, your daily life were no longer just your own. They were data points, pieces of a larger picture that someone, somewhere was putting together. This expansion of surveillance scope was not without its implications. It raised questions about privacy, about the right to be left alone, 
about the balance between security and freedom, but that was just the beginning. The events of 9-11th marked a new era in surveillance. This tragic incident served as a catalyst, prompting a global shift in how governments perceive and approach security. In the United States, this shift was most notably seen with the introduction of the Patriot Act, a piece of legislation that significantly expanded the surveillance powers of law enforcement agencies. The Patriot Act, signed into law just six weeks after 9-11, was designed to prevent further terrorist attacks. Yet, it also opened the door to practices that would otherwise have been deemed invasive or even unconstitutional. The act allowed for the collection of business records relevant to terrorist investigations, a provision interpreted broadly enough to justify the bulk collection of American citizens' phone records. Similar legislative measures were implemented worldwide, each with its own share of controversies. These laws granted governments the power to conduct warrantless wiretapping, intercept communications, and access personal data without the subject's knowledge or consent. The post-9-11 era has seen an unprecedented increase in state surveillance. Governments under the guise of national security have been able to propagate mass data collection programs. These programs, often shrouded in secrecy, have collected vast amounts of personal data from millions of people, irrespective of whether they are suspected of any wrongdoing. This expansion of surveillance powers has raised crucial questions about the erosion of privacy rights. Critics argue that such mass surveillance infringes upon our civil liberties, turning us all into potential suspects. They caution against the dangers of living in a surveillance state where every call, every email, and every online interaction can be monitored and stored. Yet proponents of these surveillance measures argue that they are necessary evils in the fight against terrorism. They contend that the collection and analysis of data can help predict and thus prevent potential threats. This ongoing debate has underscored the delicate balance between security and privacy, a balance that continues to be tested in this era of digital surveillance. The balance between security and privacy was shifting. As we moved further into the 21st century, the scale tilted even more towards security, setting the stage for the next phase of surveillance, the era of big data. Today, surveillance has taken on a new form with the advent of big data. The digital revolution has led to an explosion of information, and this information is now being used in ways we could have only imagined in the past. In the realm of modern surveillance, big data plays a pivotal role. It's not just about collecting information anymore, it's about mining that data, analyzing it, and using it to predict future events. This process, known as predictive analytics, can be incredibly useful. For instance, it can help authorities anticipate potential threats and take action to prevent them. But with great power comes great responsibility, and unfortunately this power has often been used to further erode individual privacy. Every click you make online, every purchase you complete, every location you visit with your smartphone in your pocket, is potentially a piece of data that can be collected, analyzed, and used. As a result, our every move, both online and offline, can be tracked and monitored. This is not just theoretical. Companies are already using big data to predict consumer behavior, and governments are using it to monitor their citizens. For example, in some countries authorities are using big data to predict and prevent crime. While this may sound like a good thing on the surface, it raises serious questions about privacy and civil liberties. The scale of this surveillance is unprecedented. It's not just a matter of a few people being watched. It's a matter of entire populations being monitored. Our actions, our thoughts, our preferences, our fears and hopes, all of these can be gleaned from the data we generate. And it's not just about the present. The data being collected today can be stored indefinitely, meaning that our past can be scrutinized at any time in the future. This is a powerful tool in the hands of those with the ability to interpret and use this data. We are now living in an era of mass surveillance. As we move forward, it's crucial that we find ways to balance the potential benefits of big data with the need to preserve individual privacy and protect civil liberties. What does the future hold for surveillance and privacy? As we move forward, technology continues to evolve at an unprecedented rate and with it, surveillance techniques are becoming increasingly sophisticated. We're already witnessing the expansion of facial recognition technology, which has the potential to identify individuals in crowded public spaces or even flag certain behaviors. Imagine a world where cameras don't just see, but understand, where artificial intelligence is integrated into surveillance systems to analyze behavior, predict patterns, and make autonomous decisions. This could mean a safer world, 
where threats are identified and neutralized before they can cause harm. However, the same technology that promises to enhance security also threatens privacy. The ability to track individuals through facial recognition could easily be misused, turning public spaces into arenas for constant surveillance. The question then becomes how do we harness the power of these technologies while also protecting our fundamental right to privacy? Artificial intelligence in particular presents a unique challenge. AI has the potential to process vast amounts of data faster and more accurately than any human could. It could help law enforcement solve crimes, detect fraud, and even predict criminal behavior. But it also has the potential to invade our private lives like never before, analyzing personal data, tracking online behavior, and making predictions about our future actions. The need for regulation is clear. As these technologies continue to develop, we must ensure that they are used responsibly and ethically. This means creating laws that protect individual privacy while still allowing for the advancement of security measures. We must also consider the broader societal implications of these technologies. How will they affect our relationships, our workplaces, our public spaces? How can we ensure that they are used for the benefit of all, rather than the few? The future of surveillance is undoubtedly complex. It presents both opportunities and challenges, potential benefits and potential threats. As we navigate this new landscape, it's crucial that we maintain a dialogue about what these developments mean for our society and for our individual rights. The balance between security and privacy will continue to be a critical issue. We've traveled through time, exploring the evolution of surveillance technologies and their impact on privacy. We've seen how the scales of security and privacy have tipped back and forth, each vying for dominance in an ever-changing landscape. In the early days, surveillance was a simple affair, a pair of eyes, a set of ears. But with the dawn of the digital age, surveillance took on a new form. It evolved into a complex web of technologies capable of collecting and analyzing vast amounts of data. As we moved into the post 9 11 era, the focus shifted towards national security, leading to the implementation of wide-ranging surveillance programs. The war on terror in many ways became a war on privacy. As technology continued to advance, the reach of surveillance expanded. Big data emerged as a powerful tool in the arsenal of surveillance. It allowed for the collection and analysis of huge volumes of information, leading to a further erosion of privacy rights. Our personal lives became open books, easily accessed and read by those with the means and motivation. And what of the future? We've seen the potential for even more invasive surveillance technologies. Facial recognition, predictive policing, and mass data collection are just a few examples of what lies ahead. As these technologies become more prevalent, the balance between security and privacy will continue to be tested. Throughout this journey, one thing remains clear. The trade-off between security and privacy is a complex issue. It's a delicate balance that requires constant scrutiny and adjustment. As surveillance technologies continue to evolve, so too must our approach to privacy and security. In this ever-changing world, it's important to remember that privacy is not just a right, it's a necessity. It's what allows us to live freely, without fear of being watched or judged. As we move forward, it's crucial that we continue to question and examine this balance to ensure our rights are protected.